Welcome to worship at St. Giles Presbyterian Church. We're glad that you've joined us for this virtual worship service today. As you can tell, we're not recording in person today. 
Uh, we had a positive COVID test in my family, so we're waiting for test results for the rest of us. As soon as those come back, if they're negative, we'll be back on the regular schedule next week. Also, our videographer, uh, Mona Dow, was exposed uh, this week as her sister tested positive. So all of our recordings today will be remote and Mona will uh, creatively, as she always does, assemble them into the worship service for us Sunday. Please note that we did have some technical difficulties last week. We, we, we do hope to release the service again on Sunday on Facebook with pre-worship music beginning at 1015 and the worship service beginning at 1030. If this is your first time with us today on this virtual service, we welcome you. Our hope and prayer is that everyone will experience the grace and the presence of God in this time of worship together. Just a few announcements. Um, on Easter Sunday, April the 4th, we will have an on-site sunrise service at 7.30 a.m. It will be on the porch of the Fellowship Hall, um, safely distanced. We will ask everyone to wear masks. Music will be led by our music staff. We encourage you to um, consider being a part of that um, if you feel comfortable doing so. Also, the newsletter deadline is coming up. It will be March the 17th. If you have anything to add for the April newsletter, we encourage you to go ahead and get that to Emmy as soon as you can. As we begin our time of worship together, we take a moment to take a deep breath, let go of worries of the day, plans for the afternoon, so that we might be present to God and to those with whom we're worshiping today. Please join me in the call to worship. Let us worship God who reconciled us to himself through Christ. We are new creations. The old has gone, the new has come. Let us worship God as Christ's ambassadors. Through us and through our worship, may we announce the good news to all. Let us worship God in spirit and in truth. Praise God. We are reconciled, redeemed, renewed.
Our reading from the Psalms this morning is Psalm number one. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand up in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us come before God in confession. At the center of the law is God's love, that divine nonsense shown in becoming human for our sakes, that weakness for us which defeats the strongest powers. This love, this grace is of more value to us than all the stocks in our pension plans. Let us open ourselves to such love as we open our hearts to confess our sins to God. Let us pray. You give us your commandments, O Holy One, so we may have new life, but we continue to make the same old choices. Your love can anchor us when life threatens to overwhelm us, but we choose to cling to the slippery rocks of anger and bitterness. Your word can strengthen us for every moment, but we listen to the foolish promises of the world. Forgive us, Redeemer of our lives. May every word be shaped by your word. May every thought be refined by your grace. May every deed be inspired by your spirit, so we may tell everyone we meet of your work in us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Hear this assurance of pardon. When brokenhearted prayers replace piety, When we seek wholeness through the one broken for us, then we remember we are saved by God's powerful love. We are healed to bring healing to our world. We are strengthened in faith to become spent for others. We are set free from our bondage to sin so we may become servants of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'd like to invite the children to come a little closer to the screen now as we begin our children's time. Today we're looking at a story from the Gospel of Mark. Remember, there are four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We're looking at a story from Mark today, and this is a story that um, tells us about what was going on with Jesus and the disciples before Jesus got to Jerusalem and was arrested and betrayed and crucified. Jesus was telling the disciples what what was going to happen, and the disciples couldn't hear it. They were having another conversation among themselves. While Jesus was telling them this important news, they were talking about who was going to be the greatest of his people. Now, we probably know what that's like. I wonder if any of us have ever wondered who's the best or greatest basketball player from among our friends, or the best singer or the best musician, or maybe the best baseball player, the best artist, the best reader, the best when it comes to being smart. What we learn from this story is that we all kind of struggle with those things. There are important things in our lives that we need to be thinking about, like taking care of others and loving people like Jesus did. And then sometimes we're also thinking about who's the greatest. What we learn from this story is that The greatest person is the person who loves. The greatest person is the person who serves and cares for their neighbor, like Jesus did. So whenever we're struggling with things like who's the greatest or who's the best, this story helps us remember to try to think about Jesus and how he was great because he loved others and he cared for them. Let's try to remember that today. Will you pray with me? Dear God, We thank you for Jesus and for his message that reminds us that the greatest person is the person who loves 
and cares and takes care of their neighbor. Help us to be like that each and every day. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our gospel reading today comes from Mark's gospel, the ninth chapter, verses 30 through 37. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Someone told a story about a little girl who was named Jan, and she was about two and a half or three years old. One evening, she was banging her teaspoon on her high chair while ceaselessly and shrilly demanding dessert. Annoyed by the noise, her mother, heading down quickly to the freezer to fetch some ice cream, said irritably, have some patience. On her return from the basement, Jan's mother found her little girl in what seemed to be the middle of a convulsion. Her face was bright red, her body was rigid, her fists were clenched, her eyes were fixed in a stare, in addition to which she didn't appear to be breathing. Letting the ice cream drop from her hands and screaming, what's the matter? Jane's mother hurried to her daughter's side, whereupon Jan unclenched her fists, stopped holding her breath, and replied, I'm having patience. I'm guessing most of us struggle with patience, and maybe some of us show that struggle in our faces. The line at the grocery store is long, and there are only two registers open, and we grimace. Or it's that particular place in town where traffic is slow, and everyone is using the known side street shortcut. We frown. Maybe we end up waiting longer than we had planned at the doctor's office. Maybe we fume when the computer won't connect to the website in a timely way. Or we call customer service and we not only have to wait on the phone for another computer to offer the options, but we're put on hold again when we choose to speak to an actual person. Impatience is a common struggle. We want to get from point A to point B as quickly as possible. When we're young, we want to grow up fast. When we start working, we want to climb the professional ladder quickly. When we tell our child or grandchild to clean the room, we mean now. And when we need direction or struggling to make a decision and wonder where God might be in the midst of it all, we wish clarity would come quickly so that we can move on. But the reality of life is that things are not resolved that quickly. The AA program reminds us that we can sometimes be like children in that we want what we want and we want it now. But that's not the way life works. Today, we're in week three of our sermon series on discerning God's will. We began by stating the obvious. If we're discerning direction or clarity individually or in community, then we first need to ask the question. And sometimes we start with joining together in deciding what the right question is. It may feel simplistic, yet it's not a spiritually immature question to ask for guidance. It's actually a gesture of our need and belief that God is interested in the details of our lives. So we ask, then pause, and open ourselves to wonder, mystery, life, God. Last week we noted that this naturally includes listening. Ancient and modern writers on the spiritual life talk about attending to God, being present to the God who's always present. A living faith, or what we might call the faith of a mystic, not pious or perfect, is one that listens for God in all things, in creation, in sacred texts, individual and communal prayer, through concrete involvement with the poor, through involvement in Christian community, in charity and self-sacrifice. 
and in being vulnerable for love as Christ was vulnerable for love. Today, we reflect on the notion that discerning includes living with tension. The prophet Isaiah wrote that they who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Discernment includes spending some time in the in-between moments of life. In that space, we trust that in the tension of the unknowing, God is present and is at work. It's like letting the bread finish baking. Even though it smells so good, we want to take it out early and eat it. It's like letting the engine warm up before we rev it. It's like letting the seed germinate and coming by every morning to watch until it breaks through the dirt. It's like letting the heart and mind come together in decision and action. Discerning is not like fast food, thank goodness. Quick, cheap, but unhealthy. We don't get to pull up to the window, order, and get our clarity quickly. Discernment takes time, intentionality. It's healthy, and what we get is worth the wait. Our scripture from the Psalms this morning offers a beautiful image of trees planted by streams of water. This natural image reminds us that when the conditions are right, when trees get the nutrients and water they need, they produce fruit in due season. We can't rush it. We have to be patient. Farmers and gardeners know this better than anyone. There's a right time to till the soil, a right time to plant, feed, and water for the fruit to come forth. If there's a heat wave and the blossoms come too early, then the cold that is normal for that time of year will kill the blossoms and stop the fruit from coming. If it's too cold, too soon, too long, then the tree gets confused. It's used to warm coming and it stays dormant for a while longer. The work of nature in plant growth is a slow work, as is the work of discernment. For about seven months now, you've been in a time of discernment. You're just now beginning to gather in groups and ask questions about your identity. You've begun a process of listening to one another and sharing hopes, dreams, and frustrations about your ministry together. As you share lots of ideas and preferences, your transition team is compiling all your feedback and putting the gist of your desires into summaries that will become a part of your mission study report and any conclusions will go to the session for action. The goal will be to prayerfully use your preferences also to discern who might be the right person to join you in ministry and move forward with you in your hopes and dreams. This is the time when being patient will likely be a challenge. We all want to move quickly, yet there's more to be discussed about who you are and where God is calling you. Discerning God's will necessarily means we trust the slow work of God. It means we live with the tension of the now and the not yet. One Christian writer notes that the biblical notion for this is pondering. And by that, they mean patiently holding something inside one's soul, complete with all the tension that it brings. Let's hover here for a moment. Patiently holding something inside one's soul. Mary is the ponderer in the Gospels. She ponders what the angels say about her giving birth to a deliverer, a Messiah. She ponders what Jesus says as a boy when they find him in the temple. And as a mother, she must have pondered it all when she saw him betrayed, arrested, and crucified. A life that seeks to discern where God is in our living and our actions is a life of holding mystery in our souls, things unknown and unresolved, with all our questions and hopes trusting and looking for clarity. If we were together today, uh, I would invite us all to pull out a rubber band. We might have some in the pews for us and stretch them with our hands and hold them there. We've all played with rubber bands before. We hold it in our hands and stretch it, and sometimes it flips back and snaps us. Sometimes it flies away. We wouldn't want that to happen if we were in a group. Living with tension is a stretching of sorts. Premature premature resolution of decisions sometimes is about our ego. We take the power and push a decision, like letting go of one side, so we get snapped or the band flies across the room. No more tension, no more discernment. Premature resolution of decisions can also be about the exclusion of others. It can be painful, like the snapping of the band. 
We think we have the answer, and in essence, we leave God and others out of it. Our scripture from Mark's gospel shows us that struggling with tension is not a new dynamic when it comes to faith. Jesus had just told the disciples that he would be betrayed, killed, and after three days rise again. Mark says the disciples didn't understand, and they were afraid to ask questions. When they got to the next town, Jesus asked them what they had been talking about, and it seems that they were embarrassed. They were silent. They'd been talking about who was the greatest. Jesus had just told them about what would happen to him, the mystery of death and resurrection. Pretty important stuff. The disciples preferred only good news. They couldn't live with the tension, so they just talked about what they wanted. Sometimes if we're impatient or if things are not going our way, we just do our own thing. But that's just it. When we go it alone, when we do our own thing, we end up alone and keep finding ourselves there again and again and again. It doesn't work in community. Discernment is inclusive. It pays attention to various sources like in-between moments, broken places, faith communities, trusted friends, all the while being open to wonder and the unknown. As one Christian writer has said, discernment is holding something in our soul until it is transformed. Well, if we'd been holding our rubber bands all this time, our hands would probably be aching a little bit, a little bit of muscle uh, tension. We would let go if we were holding them together and talk about that because living with tension requires some muscle. Emotional muscle that's willing to name and live with our imperfections in tension with the promise that we are beloved of God and God is for us. Living with tension invites, requires the muscles of the mind and will. We choose to stay with the tension, affirm that we're not God, and that God speaks in and through community so we can discern together. Living with attention requires the muscles of faith. We trust that God is at work and we continue living and serving all the while listening for the God who speaks to us in it all. Discernment is soul work involving the mind, heart, and action. We ask, pause, listen, and live with the tension of not yet knowing. It's a practice of trusting God within and God among us, believing that we will find a way together and committing together to go in whatever direction our discernment leads. Can we open ourselves to anticipate what we might learn together? Can we open our hearts and minds to where God might lead? I can't wait to see what is discerned here at St. Giles. Amen. We're invited to join now together in our affirmation of faith. For the Sundays during this sermon series, we've been using parts of the brief statement of faith of the Presbyterian Church USA. We continue with that this morning. I invite us to join together in the affirmation of faith. In life and in death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor, and binds us together with all believers in the one body of Christ, the Church. The same Spirit who inspired the prophets and apostles rules our faith and life in Christ through Scripture, engages us through the word proclaimed, claims us in the waters of baptism, feeds us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation, and calls women and men to all ministries of the church. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen.
I invite us to join now together in prayer as we join in the prayer of the people followed by the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. O oh, Jesus, you know the anguish of our human lives. As one who sees the pain of those who suffer, bring comfort, peace, and strength to all those we have shared on our prayer list, those whose needs remain private, and all who suffer today. As one who's experienced the agony and tears of losing loved ones, comfort all who grieve and give us the grace to be present for them. As one who wept over the faithlessness of your people, send your spirit to correct us in our unfaithfulness and lead us into new pathways. As one who understands the agony of those who've been deserted, stand alongside those who feel alone and abandoned today. As one who was once forsaken by all others, give hope and assurance to those who feel rejection. As one who knows the ravages of violence, bring peace and healing to those who are harmed by enemies. You, our Lord, have offered up prayers with loud cries and tears. Hear us when we do the same. We approach your throne of grace with boldness. May we receive mercy and grace in our time of need. We pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we go out into the world today, sisters and brothers, let us claim the freedom Christ gives us by his self-giving on the cross. May he enable us to serve together in faith, hope, and love. Let us go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.